So if you don't want to, uh, words are hard and there are so many. And all of my little notifications are going off, so I apologize. Well, it has been one full week without any new Outlander episodes. So congratulations. And of course, one of the things I really love about being a fan of Outlander is one, there's so many of us and we love to talk about it. Uh, And two, that we come in many flavors. Some people who have read the books, have them memorized and kind of watch the episodes. Some people who have watched every episode a thousand times and can tell you word for word every moment. And those who have read and watch and really love comparing the differences or choosing which they like that did it best. And those who take it almost as two different stories or, or two versions of the same story, no comparing, just taking them as they are and enjoying what we've been given. Regardless of how you look at Outlander, there are some interesting topics that come up in the comments after the reviews. And so I'm going to go over three of the things that I found most interesting that you shared either in the comments or during discussions. Oh, I have to say, if you have not watched the uh, first part of season seven, especially the finale, don't watch this. Stop. Come back to it later. Bookmark it. It'll be here. I promise I'm not taking it down. Just spoilers all right now that it's just us let me tell you something that i saw that was pretty interesting about the final uh, scene of our last episode of this first part of season seven and oh my gosh i'm already tired of saying that so when we get to scatland finally and jamie and claire and ian come up and are looking out at uh, the shore yeah that's one of the first things that they filmed even though we get it as the very last scene Now, I did joke during uh, Droughtlander that we can never really tell what's going to happen in what order because occasionally they have a reason to film certain scenes out of order. And wouldn't you know it, Meryl Davis confirms that this particular scene was actually filmed during the first block of filming. Actually, we filmed that final moment in the first block. So I need to think about that, that that was one of the first things we shot. So... Yeah, it's, it's always interesting to find out that behind the scenes when they are putting things together, their reaction after having been gone for so long is actually one of the first things that they filmed rather than something that they filmed at midway point, which I just thought was a really interesting bit of trivia. Oh, and Meryl Davis also points out that the amount of time that they have been gone from Scotland, our characters have been gone from Scotland, is nearly the same amount of time that the show has been out. It's like a full circle moment. And it's been about nine or 10 years since Jamie and Ian have been home, which is great. I mean, the fact that we've been shooting the show for that long kind of tells you it's kind of a a weird kind of parallel moment for all of us. Which is a pretty interesting bit of trivia in itself. Now, the second thing that I wanted to talk about for uh, a little bit of a spoiler comparative to uh, the, the, the novels is Claire's Ring. Now, I know Bevan Boulder, she is this fantastic person who has come and spoken with me uh, live many times on our little Sunday chats, uh, occasionally on Monday. And one of the things that is really fascinating to me about Bev is that she be she belongs to a group of women called uh, Ladies of Lollybrock. And at some point, there was an idea of creating a ring that was straight out of the description from the book. And they did. And so uh, as people who are dedicated so much that they create a piece of jewelry to represent this amazing character's piece of jewelry, you can imagine their disappointment when during the first season, the ring Jamie gives to Claire is very, very different. And then the worst thing was the ring, which they have, they finally got the real ring in. The thing is, we, the people who were, more active in the ladies of Lollybrock. A lot of us, I have that ring. I bought it. Oh, it doesn't so, fit yeah. me anymore. But we we coordinated with Diana and she approved the design. And we we had Claire's ring that we did. And um there are another another a number of other places where you can buy it. But I, I understand that Diana told them you it's gonna be horrible you're not it's gonna be bad she was right there's an uproar throughout the uh, outlander fandom of the difference in these two things 
This is before me. I remember I didn't start watching until season two had already aired. And so I missed all of this drama. This is not news to me now, but I find it interesting that it was, at least online, uh, something that people really were upset about. Of course, we now know that later on, the creators decided to replace that ring and, and give it uh, more of a flourish, the type that we would have seen in the book. But the funny thing about that is why that ring was different. Now, there's been a couple of different theories. The, the three that, that I'm going to share with you are are one, the theory that uh, was shared on a podcast. This is that uh, Terry Dresbeck and Ronald D. Moore came up with the idea of uh, Angus and um, Rupert going and getting this ring created because everybody else had a job. Uh, Ned was getting the dress. Dougal was making sure they had a church. And so Angus and Rupert needed a job, and that was to do the ring and to get it done. A lot of people also believe that it was done so that it would look more more identifiable on screen than the gold ring and the inscription that was supposed to be the identifier for Brianna when she saw the ring uh, with Bonnet. A gold ring would be a gold ring. It would be very difficult to identify, but uh, the, the very simple and yet distinctive look of the ring that Jamie gives clear in the series is very identifiable for Brie, which makes it easier for that to play out uh, on screen. Now, I personally also believe that the difference was done so that they could bring Murtaugh back uh, a little bit more easily uh, and give him something fun to do. Okay, maybe he had better things to do, but I think it was really nice that, that Murtaugh being a silversmith was the person who made the ring that was more closely... Um, identifiable to the description given by Diana in the books. Now, my third funny thing that I am going to share, and there were three, not four. Um, I think I did say three earlier, but I think you might be used to seeing four things from me. So this is the third thing. And this is a slightly newer piece of information for those of you who have definitely not read the books. So if you do want to read the books later and don't want to be given a spoiler, I thank you so much for joining me uh, this far. But definitely you don't want to watch this next part. Okay, for the rest of us, when uh, Claire finds Jamie on the battlefield during the last uh, episode there, we are expecting a couple of things to happen uh, that don't. But one of the things that were really discussed here was the uh, amputation of a certain appendage. Don't worry, it's not that appendage. Jeez. We, a lot of us expected Jamie to lose a finger. In the books, he is, uh, well, Claire has no choice but to remove the finger. And in, obviously, the, the television series, we see that she's able to repair the damage. He's going to have yet another scar. However, he will be fine. And all of my little notifications are going off, so I apologize. But he'll be fine, uh, and we expect him to have full use, no pain, just as Claire says. The reasoning for that is exactly what you probably think it is. It's it, Nobody wanted to bother with the makeup and the CGI, and from what I understand, Sam would have had to wear a, a sort of a sleeve for any time his hand would have been part of a, a scene. It would have been ridiculous, and I'm sure part of it was the money, but also... Why deal with that when it's not really a necessary part of the story going forward? We'll lose a couple of small things, but as far as the main story and the tone of what happens after, uh, none of the major plots that I'm looking forward to have anything to do with his pinky being lost or will be affected in any great way by his uh, a loss of a finger. So those are the three funny changes, funny things that I thought I would share real quick. Now, if you thought of any other interesting bits that you'd like me to look up, research, find out why things were done, um, say so in the comments below. It might be a fun project. And I'm always learning more about Outlander just by having things that I want to share with you. And then I do research and find out more. So please let me know below if there's anything else interesting uh, that you want me to find out. Until then, just check out any of my other videos here and I will see you there.